Right, so last time that we came to the boat, I'd had the Winston LifePo lithium batteries, 10 years old, hooked up to the boat, right? It's possible the Winstons are dead. We hadn't been here for two months and I'd left them connected and uh, it worried me a little bit. I should have disconnected them, but they weren't actually connected to the boat circuitry. They were just connected together. And I do know that two of the cells were a bit out of balance. And you know what's happened? So last time when we came, we found that the packs were completely flat. I think one or two of them are zero volts and the rest are just a little below one volt, you know, when they should be 3.2 volts if they are fully charged. This has happened before. I accidentally left the uh, power connected and unfortunately I forgot to turn the solar panel charging back on because I'd been working on it. And I had to rush off and go back to work. That was 10 years ago. The batteries have been going for that long. Still, they kept going for another 10 years. Are they toast now? I'll show you them. They don't look great. You can see that they have blown up like a packet of chips. In fact, I don't know how I can connect them back up together because I just can't get the terminals close enough. But I'm not giving up on them. I think they've still got some life left in them. Thankfully, we had the lead times from the RV after we replaced the lead times with the Epic batteries. I had the lead times sitting here on the boat and we were able to use them in the meantime. But I don't want to give up on the Winstons. At least I can recover them, charge them up, maybe sell them. I don't know how much I could get for them. I've bought myself a charger from Amazon. It's a 10 amp constant current charger and we can just set it up at uh, 3 volts or so, 3.2 and do a top balancing, which is what the packs need. They need to be top balanced. Now, instead of waiting for that 10 amps to do its job, which could take a week to fill up 800 amps, it's gonna take 80 hours, isn't it? That's not quite a week, but it's four days. I'm going to try and build the packs again into 12 volts, and then I'm gonna let the Victron charger put in 60 amps instead, you know, which is gonna decrease that charge time by six. So the mission is to try and get the connectors across the terminals. Now, from experience, they get fat like this because the chemistry's changed with the voltage. Once uh, the voltage gets back to its three volts or so, they lose weight. It's amazing. Wish I could do it like that. I just plug me in and I'll be thin tomorrow. So that's what we're going to try and do now is uh, just one pack at a time. Try and bring it back to about three volts and uh, get them to lose weight. And then when I get the charger from Amazon, it's not here yet, then I can do the top balancing properly. Let's do it. I've assembled my first pack. Now, you can see these are never gonna make it across terminal anymore. I'm gonna have to get creative with how I'm gonna join these up. I've got my two charging cables coming from the inverter. The inverter's defaulted to 60 amp charge, which is what I normally use, can do 80 if there's enough juice. But what I'm gonna do is bring it right down to say 20 amps. And I'm gonna charge these guys slowly. That's assuming that I can join them together. I think I'm gonna do it like this because it's the belly of the battery that is the uh, fattest, of course. Uh, I've chosen the two skinniest bat cells and these two can go together here, I think like that. These two will come together here, positive, negative for the charge. So that may work. Just before we hook them up, I wanna check the voltages on each cell. And I also wanna make sure there's no reverse polarity. Apparently they can go reverse and that would indicate totally damaged and not usable. All right, ooh, so that's 1.6. Over here we got more. Hey, see they've recovered. Whoa, 2.2. See, th these guys are recovered by themselves. 2.16, this is good news. Oh, this one's 0.06. Oh, 
Wow. There's going to be a bit of current flowing when I hook this guy up because it, yeah, he's a bit scary. All right, here we go. Well, that uh, 0.06 volt cell, I've decided to parallel up with uh, another one of its mates, which is 2 volt, just to get some balance into it. I think they'll drop, even Stevens, they'll probably drop down to 1.5 volts each now, or less, 1.2-ish, which is not so different to the 2 volts these are. So uh, I think I might let it sit for 30 minutes like that and let it balance up just a bit. Got to do these things carefully, you know. All right, so I've let these two cells uh, sit together for uh, about 45 minutes. I'll take them apart and check the voltages again, see what it looks like now. Just maybe get it a little bit more balanced up, yeah. I think what I need to do is to bottom balance these. Basically, they're, you know, very low uh, state of charge and I need to equalize them now. I need to balance them now before I charge them as a pack. The challenge is physically connecting them together with these braids, with these connectors, because of the fatness. What I think I'm going to have to do is I've got a pillow here and some old rags and towels, and I'm going to have to build up a ramp so that they are mounted in this fashion, so that the connectors reach on top. So that's the challenge now. Well, it worked. It's uh, got a pillow up the bum and it is sitting nicely. Now, I can't charge it like this. It's in a three volt configuration. Well, it should be three, but it's probably end up being one and a half. But what I'm doing is balancing each cell so that when we do charge it, when I reconfigure it and I charge it, it should charge in a balanced manner. I love these batteries, they're 10 years now, and I know the reason that they've sort of crapped out on me now, or at least two cells have crapped out on me, is uh, because I didn't use them. If they were being used every day, charged, discharged, charged, they wouldn't have had a problem. Batteries going in. That's because I didn't use them for two years. Two of the cells dropped away, and then I left them on, and the thing is with lithiums, when a cell starts to run away, it runs away fast and uh, yeah, it can deplete the rest of the pack, which is what's happened. So. All right, now I need to try and do this to the other pack. Man, I must really love these batteries. <laughs> Look at this struggle to get them where they need to be, connected in parallel. And right now, they're just sort of balancing up. Yeah, that's probably called a bottom balance i reckon they'll all sort of equalize at around 1.8 volts but that's good because they'll be equalized and then i can apply the charge and then hopefully they will charge equally 1.8 volts what's that times four this is about 7.2 volts so it's not enough to turn on the bms so i can't use the bms until it gets up around the 11 volt mark I, I can't stand to throw them away because I know they're still good. We've decided we'll go with the Epic batteries, which uh, are in the RV right now, but um, we'll take them out and put them in Jupiter because they are sweet. They are sweet, but they're a lot of money. And they're simple too. So if you've got the money, go for the Epics. Things are much simpler with that. The Winstons are a bit more complicated. You've got uh, individual cells you've got to take care of. But I've got the BMS and the monitor and everything. I think you could easily get another five years out of these if you take care of them. Someone wants them. 500 bucks. Make me an offer. You pay for the freight, yeah. All right, so I've got the DC clamp meter set up. We're showing 0 0.15 amps right now. So i got to just uh, got the negative hooked up. Here comes the 12 volts. Shouldn't be any issues here because it's going straight to the inverter, basically, this one, which is off. So, yeah, all right. That one's not tight. Jeez. 
This is where sparks can fly. Luckily I've got a rubber coated socket driver. All right, we're good here. Everything's good. We're almost zero. I've got to plug in the shore power. Shore power is on. Next, uh, so we're showing 0.05 amps. Here comes the inverter charger. Starts with alarm. Whoop! I hate that noise. So the relays triggered alarm again. I think it'll try a couple of times because there's not 12 volts. So once it knows it's got shore power, the charger will start and we should see it's trying. All right, so, so far the charger is not turning on. I should unplug the Starlink because that could get a bit manked up. It's not looking good so far. We could just try charger only. Let's try that. Well, I've given it a good try. The charger just won't start charging. There's a chance that one or two of those cells are cactus and an internal short, not a short, but a, um, a break perhaps. So what I'm gonna do is try the other pack. They seem healthier. I'm getting like, I think it's like two volts in parallel. So there's an average of two volts per cell there. So that should bring it up to eight volts. Whereas this pack is showing now, it's showing 1.8 got four times more power, which means it, it's possibly less damaged. So let's swap these around and uh, see if we can get better results. All right, the new pack is installed. Let's check out what the voltage is on this pack. I know it's gonna be much better. I'm gonna guess about six or seven volts. Let's have a look. Six point one seven, well that's well, that is way better than the other one. <laughs> All right, let's hook up the battery cables. And charger is off. Ah! We have some voltage. I would say that's the capacitors in the inverter charging up. Although I would have thought they would have been ready to go. But wired up the clamp meter is showing pretty much zero amps flowing which is what we expect time to turn on the inverter let's have a go we'll try inverter first okay we have alarm let's see if it tries whoop charging twenty five amps twenty three it should be 10. It's dropping down. Must be like a big inrush. 20 amps. I'm, I'm happy if it stays around there. But we are charging. We are charging. So let's just uh, check what voltage is being applied here. Oh, all right, so yeah, sort of balancing. It's nine, so it's definitely up from what it was and it is charging. <laughs> Whoa. I wonder how we're going to resurrect the other pack. All right. So it's really 9.6 volts and it's uh, charging at 10 amps. That's perfect. That is perfect. Now let's see what the uh, Victron configs. Are these my reading glasses? Don't think so. Let's see what the Victron BE config says. Charging, so we got 9.8 volts now and 12 amps going in. I like it. We could turn up the charge current. I don't see any reason why not. Do it, let's make it 20. Send. Here we go, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 19. Well, that's a big relief. At least have a 400 amp back, you know. Um, if I can revive at least 400 amp pack, that's for somebody's boat. They can run their boat on 400 amps, no problem. They're gonna be a little on the skimpy side. No air conditioners, that's for sure. But for a basic, 400 amps is heaps. Yes! The other pack. We're gonna to have to baby them a bit more. 
I'll wait till I get my charger. It's only a 10 amp charger, but I can charge them while they're in parallel at three volts. Charge them up. It'll take a long time. 400 amp pack, so uh, it will take 40 hours. <laughs> That's all right, it's two days, no problem, no problem. Well, that's not good. The Winstons accepted the charge and they topped up, but uh, overnight, without charge, they've dropped down to 10 volts. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to retire these guys. That's sad. And you know, the damage was done because I let them sort of just, I didn't touch them for two years, basically. <sighs> Now how to dispose of them. I'm gonna have to Google that up. Can't just throw them in the rubbish. I mean, you legally can't throw them in the rubbish bin, but like they're a fire hazard. Like the trash skips that are outside here are steel. <laughs> so they will definitely start a fire. Damn. Sort of makes my heart ache a little bit because yes, they're 10 years old, but they also cost a lot of money. For the 800 amps, it was about 5,000 US dollars. Technology is better now, I think, uh, and the epochs are going to do great. Sad. That's the end of my Winston Prismatic LifePo batteries. Ten years, it's not bad. If I had taken care of them, if I was using them, charging them, balancing them, they could have lasted longer, I'm sure. But as you saw, the pack dropped down to 10 volts overnight after being charged up yesterday. Um, also under load, with, when I use the induction cooker, uh, I was drawing about 120 amps and it drops down from 13.5, it would drop down to 12. That's a big sag. I'm not sure that that's normal either. So they're gone. I messaged the uh, owner of the boatyard and I said, do you know where there is a, somewhere I can dispose of? lithium batteries and he says I'll take them so come and got them and now they're gone it's a bit it was sort of like my baby because I put that system together took a lot of researching you know and and uh, it behaved beautifully for uh, you know all the time that we were sailing oh well a bit sad